At the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Satyan Deka for giving me this opportunity to be here today. My talk is on traumatic endophthalmitis, evaluation, management and outcome. We all know that post-traumatic endophthalmitis, though rare, is a devastating complication as far as open globe injuries are concerned. And overall, the visual prognosis and outcome is worse than post-operative trauma endophthalmitis. And it also depends on the extent of the traumatic tissue damage as well as the virulence of the infecting organism. <laughs> traumatic endophthalmitis uh, accounts for almost 25 to 30 percent of all cases of endophthalmitis and it also carries an increased risk in the presence of an intraocular foreign body. And various studies have shown that in the incidence of traumatic endophthalmitis in the absence of an intraocular foreign body is about 3.1 to 11.9 percent in open globe injuries, whereas if it is with an intraocular foreign body, it is uh, uh, varies from 3.8 to as high as 48.1 percent. The, as far as the risk factors are concerned, the, 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 the retained intraocular foreign body, if it is a non-metallic intraocular foreign body, it has a higher risk. And high velocity intraocular foreign bodies may self-sterilize due to heat, so they are a little they are less risky. Lens rupture, delayed timing of the primary repair, especially if it is more than 24 hours. There were large wound size of more than 4 millimeter. And location of the wound, uh, like posterior scleral lacerations, ocular tissue prolapse, and uh, rural locale, all, all these carry uh, increased risk. And these are associated with extreme pain, with the hypopion and vitritis, which indicate endophthalmitis until proven otherwise. And the high risk, as I already showed, are delayed repair of more than 24 hours, dirty wound, lens capsule uh, rupture, and an intraocular foreign body. The diagnosis of is a uh, little difficult immediately after globe rupture because of trauma-induced inflammation and the disruption of the ocular structures. But it's usually associated with pain, decreased vision, photophobia and tearing and pain is usually out of proportion to the degree of injury. It's also associated with lid edema, chemosis, corneal edema, a a and AC fibrin, hypopion, retinitis and peripheritis. As far as the organism, several pathogens have been implicated as causative agents following the endophthalmitis following ocular trauma. And it differs from post-operative endophthalmitis in that 50% are gram-positive, 33% are gram-negative and 16% are fungi. So gram-positive accounts for majority of the infections, mostly staph epidermidis, staph, it can be staph aureus, cryptococcus pneumoniae, bacillus or even propionibacter magnus. Gram negative is uh, less common than gram positive. It can be pseudomonas or other gram negative organisms like Proteus or Actinobacter. No cardia is usually associated with uh, soil contamination in rural areas. Though it's rare, it can be associated with anti acid nodules or clumps of exudates, as you see here, and it carries a poor prognosis. Bacillus, it is a fulminant infection leading to total corneal infiltrates and it can also lead to thysis bara in 48 to 72 hours. Fungal endophthalmitis is less common but it, uh, the incidence varies from 0 to 15.4 percent. Mostly it's candida albicans or it can also be due to aspergillus or uh, fusarium. <coughs> Fungal infections is usually associated with a delayed onset and the mean onset of symptoms is um, 2.8 weeks. The clinical signs are uh, usually it's a fairly benign eye with minor discomfort, slowly progressive intraocular inflammation uh, and it can be also associated with presence of an inflammatory mass in the vitreous or anterior chamber which usually is seen as a white vitreous snowball or a string of pearls. If there is a suspicion of endophthalmitis, the eye should always be uh, evaluated for the presence of an intraocular foreign body. You can take a plain x-ray or you can take a CT scan of the orbit. CT scan is helpful for small objects with cut width of 1 millimeter. The MRI is not recommended unless it is certain that the retained in the intraocular foreign body is not ferromagnetic. B scan is helpful for radiolucent foreign bodies as glass or plastic. 
but extreme caution should be used if there is a suspicion of an open globe injury and you should do it very meticulously. It also can uh, show you that uh, there is a presence of a tractional retinal detachment on membranous vitritis as you see here. As far as culture and sensitivity are concerned, you should always be taken in suspected cases where fluid samples should be collected from both the anterior chamber and the vitreous. Bacteria should also be sent for gram stain and culture on blood and chocolate at the diabetic blood broth and heart brain infusion broth of fluid should be performed for bacteria and also for culturing on saprons, dextrose or potassium hydroxide preparation for fungal. First, you take an uh, AC tap, you do an AC tap, collect material, and then you also do a vitreous tap. We can also be sent for exciton, which is, is, is uh, wherein, uh, uh, wherein you have an endophthalmitis panel like for uh, gram positive, gram negative, and fungi. Gram positive, they all have for staph, aureus, group B, streptococcus, enteropococcus, and then gram negative, E. coli, H. influenzae, pneumonia, pseudomonas, and for fungi, candida, aspergillum, and fusarium. Its the advantage is if you can take a single sample, it's just a single test, and it takes seven hours process time. So in any case of suspected endophthalmitis, you take an uh, anterior chamber and vitreous biopsy, or also rule out an intractor of foreign body. Then you, obtain, you send it for culture sensitivity and obtain a culture sensitivity report. And then uh, at the same time you do a culture sensitivity, you can also inject an uh, intractor uh, antibiotics. Or, or you, and also you can change it or repeat it once you get a culture sensitivity report according to it. And if there is no improvement, then you repeat the intravitreal injection, antibiotics as integrated by the culture sensitivity report. And if it is clinically worsening, then you go ahead and consider a core vitrectomy. So the treatment guidelines, initial treatment is based on the clinical findings and it is empirical. Then you include intravitreal antibiotic injection, systemic or topical, then directly inject antibiotics into the globe but affords the highest drug concentrations in the vitreous. Once cultured results are available, then you reassess your drug regimen and treatment can be modified according to it. Intravitreal vancomycin and safdazam is the commonly used one. It covers both gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. For, as far as specific therapy, if you suspect pseudomonas, then you can in, inject intravitreal vancomycin and suftazidam with intravenous vancomycin and suftazidam or clindamycin. Then if you suspect methicillin resistant staph aureus, then you can in, inject intravitreal clindamycin phosphate. If it is uh, clostridium, then intravitreal vancomycin and suftazidam with intravitreal vancomycin and clindamycin. And if it is a fungus, then you can consider oral auriculosis Systemic therapy, because of a breach in the blood retinal barrier in these traumatized cells, systemic antibiotics are important in traumatic and ophthalmitis. You can consider intravenous vancomycin and intravenous aftazidine. Additionally, intravenous clindamycin, where vancomycin is contraindicated. Alternatively, you can also give oral ciprofloxin tablets or levofloxin and also analgesics. Also, you can use fortified topical antibiotics while you await for the culture results. Like, like vancomycin, hydrochloride and subtazidam, 100 mg per ml. Alternatively, you can also uh, th th think of topical uh, moxifloxin with fortified topramycin and it should be compliant with an uh, analgesic. As far as steroids, it's still controversial. The benefits are it can control inflammation and infection related tissue injury and also uh, prevent collateral retinal damage. But you, there's also a possibility of suppressing the infection control and its usage depends on the culture and sensitivity. The recommended ones are topically you can use predacetate or intravitreal dexamethasone if it is KOH negative. 
as far as intraocular foreign body cases, the definitive treatment is vitrectomy. You remove the intraocular foreign body, then you do a culture sensitivity, and then you you also work it with intravitreal and systematic antibiotic therapy. Vitrectomy, the advantages are the removal of the infective organisms and the toxins, so you remove the bulk, removal of the vitreous membrane, so you can prevent the tractional or retinal detachment. You also restore the media clarity. There's a rapid and complete stabilization of the vitreous cavity, and there also you get adequate material for culture. The disadvantages is uh, there's, a retinal, uh, there's always a chance for retinal detachment, and the changes in vitreous and retinal due to because of changes in vitreous and retinal due to surgery, and already it's an inflamed. That is a traumatic in a case of traumatic and dermatitis, it's a fragile and necrotic retina. And with uh, your instrument manipulation, suction turbulence, and jet stream infusion, there's always a chance of retinal detachment. So as far as prophylaxis, there's no large randomized study with a long follow-up. So prompt wound closure with immediate systemic antibiotics and presentation is helpful. And intravitreal antibiotics followed by oral antibiotics should be considered in high-risk cases. To conclude, prompt wound closure and early systemic antibiotics may be the best approach to prevent endophthalmitis. Aggressive treatment with systemic antibiotics, appropriate intravitreal antibiotics, and tightening vitrectomy are important in saving the eye. And ophthalmologists should always have a high index of suspicion of infection in an already traumatized inflamed eye and she should be aware of varied clinical and microbiological spectrum. And the final visual outcome, it depends on the multiple factors including the extent of tissue uh, damage, virulence of organisms and the presence or absence of an intraocular foreign body. Thank you. Thank you.